Hello, this is John Saltz. I just want to go over how to turn on a, a film strip for the Vision View environment. Uh, right now, I'm running this on the PC uh, version of the software, the demo software, but it runs exactly the same whether it's the PC version or the actual physical hardware, the Vision View 900 or 600 or whatever device you're looking at. So, if we're looking at the system right now, you can see at the bottom there is no film strip showing up. So the first thing we really need to look at is this view only issue. What view only is telling me, and in some cases, it'll come up and tell you there's another device connected depending on how you have it configured. Uh, view only is telling me that I have some other software that's communicating to the same camera. The camera only gives control to one software at a time. So right now it is that uh, other device. So in our case, that other device is uh, Insight Explorer software. So I can come up over here. You can see I have a little program running here. Uh, basically what I'm looking at is to see if the uh, USB stick is there and that it is retracted. So it's all ready for packaging. So if I put that back there, it's gonna say that it's bad. Otherwise it's gonna say it's good. So now that we're in the Insight Explorer, I can see that the Vision View film strip or the film strip in general is not running. If the film strip is running, you would see it down here running. Um, and you do want to click on where it says sensor. So this is the one that's running currently with the sensor. So it's apparent that I haven't set up the vision view or the film strip for the inside camera. So let's do that first. So I'm going to take the camera offline. I'm going to click up over here into the sensor and down to sensor film strip settings. And you can see that I've got it disabled here. I'm going to go ahead and enable it. I get a number of different results that we can run with. Typically, uh, we'll show either the fail results or the pass and fail results. Uh, the separate pass and fail results gives you some extra options for picking which one you want to see at a time, but generally we'll go pass and fail. Next thing we have to look at is what's the queue size. Typically, I'll set it to about 10. Um, if you're running on a PC, you can get a longer film strip, but on the uh, Vision view itself, 10 seems to be, 8 to 10 seems to be a good number. Uh, so we've got that selected. And then the next piece is we have to select the cell that's going to be associated with it. It defaults to A0, which is kind of useless. In our case, we're going to go to our result of our logic. This is where we're deciding that it's good or bad. And we select that. Now, one of the things that can happen if you had somebody editing your software uh, you can cut, paste, and copy your way out of it so that this D5 is looking at the wrong cell. So it's possible that you're running and, and either continually getting a good result or continually getting a bad result, depending on what is in that cell. Uh, so, for example, if I accidentally somehow ended up with it looking at the score, I would pass every single time because um, it's greater than zero. So let me go back to this and we'll select the right cell. And we'll say OK. And now if I put it back online, you can see we're getting our pass fail result there. If I cover this up, you see there's some fails coming in there. And that's just going to continually scroll. If at some time we wanted to stop it to see why it failed, you could just click freeze, come in here and click on the individual cell, and you can see my big hand in the way. And once we're done, we just hit continue. So now that we know that the film strip is properly set up, Let's go ahead and shut this window down. And we go back over to our vision view. And you can see it's still showing that it's view only here. And the reason for that is the vision views themselves do not reacquire the image. Once they sense that something else is in control of the camera on their own, they won't automatically reacquire. So what we need to do is we need to grab the options again, click on the vision view setup, and we can come back in here to run. And once again, now you can see that vision view is gone, but we still have no film strip. So we have one, one step left to go. If I come back here to options, we'll go to the vision view setup. We can come up here to the screen layout and we can see that the film strip, strip box is not checked. We can turn these things on and off. Uh, for example, we'll usually turn off job control because we don't want people loading jobs from the camera or we can leave it on. We can make it so they can zoom in or zoom out. That's these options here. 
If I click on the film strip, now that'll be enabled. The options for this, really there aren't a whole lot of them available. Uh, we can set it up here so we can uh, manually save images from the system. I think these two are typically checked as the default. Uh, the change reject action and save uh, images. I'm going to leave those unchecked. The other one is kind of cool here on a reject. You can set it up so that it holds the result for a number of seconds. This works really, really well if you're doing a high speed application, a, a canning line or something like that, where you want to, the, the images are coming in so fast you can't see what's going on. If you put this delay in here, when you have a reject, it's going to hold it for a few seconds and then let it go. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just leave those as the default there. We come back to our system again. We click run. And now we have our film strip at the bottom of the screen. And really that's it. If, if you've gone through all of those steps and you're still not seeing the uh, film strip, you probably need to take it to the next level and either call tech support or have us remote in and take a look at it. Uh, I guess that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to call me.